The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program, depending on their content. Uh, during the committee meetings, we thought this uh, next presentation would be ideal uh, for Las Vegas. Um, our next speaker is Megan Huberty. Uh, she's a petrographer with American Engineering Testing, where she's been for the last 12 years. She performs forensic analysis of concrete and other cementitious materials. So please welcome Megan Huberty. Like Dean said, I might have been coerced to do this presentation a long time ago. So, all right. Um, so back in 2004, my our sister company, American Petrographic Services, and my former boss, Scott Walter, was called uh, by the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. Uh, at this time, they didn't really know how to ID the body, um, so they um, actually called him for some help in the concrete field. Um, he was wondering how, why are they calling us to help them out? So they were thinking that we would be able to help them out, age date the concrete, uh, to maybe figure out when that person happened to uh, be passed away. And then, um, and then they would be able to help, uh, lower the range of when the, um, time frame was so they could go look at the missing per person's uh, case files. Um, evidently, a murder case does not actually start until you are able to identify the body. So they had to wait until they were able to pinpoint who it was until they could start doing more investigation. Um, Scott Walter had a few ideas, um, but couldn't guarantee that they would produce any results that the police department were looking for. Um, so there was no one else that they could decide to go with, so they're like, all right, let's let's do this. You know, they're both willing to try, figure it out. Um, so he did ask on the phone, how did this come about? How did how did you find this piece of concrete in the middle of the desert? And a guy, a local resident was out um, jogging with their dog, and the guy happened to actually step in the middle of where the belly button and the pubic area is and created a hole. And the dog decided to start digging in there, and so the um, runner, the guy, um, dug in there, and he happened to pull out a femur bone. So he knew that he needed to call the police. So some of the pictures um, may be a little graphic in your terms, um, but they're important to show. So here um, you would be able to see that there's um, two different placements here. Um, the first one's on the bottom, and then actually the one on the top is the third um, placement. Uh, you can see that the third and the first were not very well bonded together at all. Um, they were able to just lift it up. Um, and that could be because, you know, maybe more stuff from the digging of the grave site, you know, the rubble or the dirt and the sand and everything kind of caught in or there was some wind that pushed it. So they weren't able to bond very well. And then this is Lieutenant Tom Monahan. He's the one that called our sister company for help. Um, and the piece of concrete that you see is actually that third placement uh, flipped over. So they're viewing that right now. And then you can see where the um, collapse occurred. And then all the um, remains were all laid out. And one thing that was important was that they still had the um, upper and lower jaw um, in here, which will play a role in later. So um, when he went into um, the coroner's office, this is what he saw. Uh, they had wheeled out the sarcophagus or the, um, the grave site into the coroner's office um, on this big old gurney, and then it was covered with the yellow body bag. Um, and then you can see here, too, 
is that right here you can see it's pretty rubbly so you know that it was placed more with a lower water content so the guy didn't know how to quite mix uh, the um, concrete and then up on the top there where you can see leg holes um, that would be the um, second placement um, and obviously I think he knew from the first placement he needed to add some more water into it um, so it was nice and smooth and more um, consolidating. Here is that uh, piece you saw with Lieutenant um, Tom Monahan flipped over. Here's um, a, a more of a closer view. Um, this was considered the third placement, um, so it didn't even bond with the um, second placement, which was the legs, and this is the body. You know, uh, the third placement was kind of the head all the way down to the midsection. Um, and this one kind of had the more of the lower water because he was starting to probably run out of water with the third one too, so it was a little more rubbly. Um, so with this, they were trying to figure out, you know, um, was it the concrete? Did they? Did the guy use the water and then the stuff on site, um, the gravel there, or was it um, a bag mix that you could buy from? Um, Menards or Lowe's or Home Depot or whatever, or did someone actually pull out a ready mix truck or you know have their own drum barrel to mix it? Um, and so you can also see there's an impression right here, right there, um, and that was her ear. And then um, evidently uh, right here, there's some um, there's an X-ray that was taken of that area and we found some more information in that one. Here is um, the level of detail that you're able to see in the concrete. So you can see part of it was her skin um, that came off here. Um, this pink stuff here um, is not gum. It is the pink um, mold material that they use. They took an impression of that. Um, and then you can also see a lot of the um, cell structure that was preserved um, with her skin. So some of the x-rays, it showed that there was an earring on the upper left hand there. And then in the, over in the right, um, there was a, in that black cavity area that I pointed out, evidently the, um, there was a tongue ring that was found in that area towards the belly, butt, and stomach area. Here was the mold of her face. Um, you can see on the mold that sh it looked like there was an impact, like she got hit in her mouth. So you can see that on the right side of her face. Now, when he, um, my former boss was at the coroner's office, they got done, um, and then um, they asked if where he wanted to go next, if he needed to go out to the site, or if he wanted to go to the homicide office and look at pictures. And he only said that we just needed a five gallon pail bucket of the stuff from the on site to bring back to our lab. And then, um, so he decided to go to um, the homicide office. And he was sifting through all these pictures and came up with that. And uh, he had asked Tom Monahan, um, if they knew what that stuff was, and they he, they assumed uh, that it was just mu dried mud, um, but it was really concrete splatters. So they um, what they did was they got the uh, knife back and was able to you know get some scrapings off to see if the scrapings from the knife actually matched the stuff that was um, made to make the grave. Uh, we wouldn't be able to tell if it was the exact same like. Obviously, if there's fly ash on the in that mix and there's no fly ash in the stuff from you know that he created, then we knew that it wasn't exactly the same. But we could say that it was consistent with that stuff. Um, and this actually was found um, relatively close to the grave site, um, and it was later revealed um, that there is a fingerprint on the blade itself. So uh, when they got back to the lab, um, American Petrographic Services had polished up a section. Um, it was like in the area of the shins. Um, and then, so they were, then they phenoled it. And um, so 
Phenol helps determine the carbonation, and it's a reaction between carbon dioxide and calcium hydroxide. Um, so obviously if it turns key purple, um, then it is, sorry, uh, it lowers the pH. Um, it's initially, you know, starts out high and then kind of lowers it. Um, and then uh, you can see that there's not much carbonation around the edges of there. And that's the one one thing that he, you're able to figure out and help age date the concrete, concrete is through carbonation. So this uh, piece was polished up in phenol too. Um, it was actually taken off in between placement one and three, kind of in this area here. Um, so they cut off edges there. And then um, what happened was the legs were kind of uplifted and then the body was down here. So then all the uh, gases, which when you die, you produce a bunch of CO2, uh, the gases were coming out of the concrete. So that made the carbonation a lot um, deeper in the sample compared to where the legs were. So if we know the carbonation and the water cement ratio, we might be able to figure out an estimate on the, um, based on the carbonation levels, we'd be able to figure out the estimate of age, of how old. They made several thin sections from the different placements. And here's a thin section slide. Um, so you're, it, this is the other way you can determine the age of um, the uh, concrete is through the uh, hydrated or unhydrated. Alrighty then. Um, so you're able to determine the age of concrete. Uh, the number one, uh, the number of unhydrated particles will go down over time. Uh, there was a lot of unhydrated um, clinker particles that were in these samples. Um, so in that combination of the clinker and the carbonation they are able to figure out um, an age range of when uh, this concrete might have been um, placed. Here are the conclusions. Um, the concrete was placed in three lifts. Um, you could obviously the excellent preservation with the body. Um, based on the carbonation and the thin section results, um, we estimated the time of death was between one and three years. So that helped with eliminating, you know, a lot of missing case files. And about a month after the report was sent, uh, Lieutenant Tom Monahan came back into town and um, some of the guys from American Petrographic Services were out. They took him to a game and um, they were kind of having the one-on-one -on -one talk. Um, so do you really think it was this? What do you really think? What do you think the age really was? And um, they thought, you know, it was closer to a year and a half to two years, not the one to three, but we could definitely go to court and say one to three would be the age range. Um, so um, then four months later, we received another phone call um, and Lieutenant Tom Monahan had asked to have us go to the missingpersons.com site, and um, they were, there her face was. Um, so what they had done was they had that mold, and then they had the sketch, and then it was aired on America's Most Wanted. Um, there was this amateur sleuth or amateur detective that called in. They had one phone call call in, and so they took that name, matched it with the upper and lower um, jaw with the dental records, um, and found out it was this 17-year-old uh, female with a history of running away. And she was reported missing a year and 10 months after they had found um, the body in the desert. And her name is Jamie Sheldon. Thank you. Are there any questions?